Om Sri Sai Ram. My humble pranams at the divine lotus feet of our dearest Bhagwan, the Lord of the Universe, Sri Sati Sai Baba. Welcome to module eight, and the title is on laying the foundation for the future of the organization. Let's start with a quote from Swami. There is no place in the Sai organizations for bossism. Whether they are office bearers or others, all are equally sevaks engaged in service. This organization is intended for those who are wedded to the dedicated and selfless service. Only those who have humility to regard themselves as servants of servants can become true servants of God. All that has so far been achieved by Sai organizations is due to the unostentatious work of the active workers. I am well aware of your dedication and sacrifice in rendering service. Sri Sathya Sai Baba, 21st November, 1987. So in on the topic of future of his, the future of his organization, there are four primary objectives. The first one is leadership and succession planning. The role of us as leaders, or as Bhagwan puts it, servants of servants to the devotees in our Sai centers and regions and country. Our first objective is to create opportunities for all devotees and young adults, prepare them, empower them, and engage them. Often we may have good intentions, good-hearted leaders, but the manner in which we execute our leadership might be inconsistent, both in our style, knowledge, and practices. So therefore, we have to introspect to ensure that our good intentions are translated into good and positive actions, consistent in our style, knowledge, and practice. We have to keep young adults at center stage for the future of his organization. We have to allow them the space to be able to explore and expand in their own approaches of how they develop their relationship with Swami. And lastly, we should reassess our existing selection processes and execution within our centers to ensure that there is sufficient diversity among the office bearers within our organization. The second primary point is mentoring. We often take on a particular leadership role for a year or two or four years, depending upon the term of the limit, but then there is no one who would be able to take on that particular role once we are completed with our task. So mentoring is very, very critical. This ensures that the next set of office bearers are able to stand on our shoulders and take the center and the organization to the next realm. Therefore, our role should be to inspire, mentor, and exemplify. Our approach should always be one of servants and not masters or judges. We should inspire and motivate young adults to office better positions within the centers and have shadow executives. And so as we execute our role and responsibilities, have others assistant positions that are able to shadow yourselves such that once your position comes to uh, completion, that there would be other young adults or, or devotees within the centers who are able to then take on those positions. Item number three is culture of governance. We have to create a culture such that devotees within our centers are inspired to be able to lead and contribute towards the Sai Center rather than not. The first one is awareness. How do you create a culture of, of, of governance? Awareness is the first item. Swami's message, goal of a Sai Center and the SSIO mission, our role and responsibilities within the society should be brought aware to the devotees within the center so that they understand that it is not only their personal goal and, and their own personal sadhana that is important, but also their responsibility towards the Sai Center. We should ensure clarity of objectives 
of what is the purpose of the center differentiate between our personal Saturnine choices and that of the organization and the Sai Center in itself. Focus. We should focus ourselves on self-transformation as Bhagwan's primary objective for the organization is to ensure the inherent divinity in, our, in each and every one of the devotees at the center. And first and foremost, our own self-transformation. Focus on unity and diversity, on the human values, interfaith budgets, since we live in a very diverse country, a beautiful and diverse country. And therefore, the Sarva Dharma is critical. The approach, approach that is of universal, being inclusive, flexible, transparent across all devotees, such that it does not create separate cliques or groups within the Sai Center. We should not have any discrimination on, on any devotee and have gender inequality. Lastly, embrace the universality of Swami's teachings. Understand the universality of Swami's teachings, that his teachings are for not a single religion, but for all of humanity. Share Swami and his message in a manner that can be related to various different devotees within the center, but also those outside of the center, as well as different age groups within and outside of the center. We should first understand the geosocial cultural context that we live in currently. This would allow us to be able to expand our awareness of why and how universality of Swami's teachings are to be shared. This does not mean that we change our beliefs, our Sai principles, or anything of that matter. Our core practices, our Sai principles are always intact, and th those are never changing. But how we express ourselves and share those messages and Swami's teachings should include the points that are made aware above. And that, and most importantly, is understanding the geosocial cultural contracts that we live in. So with that, let us summarize the primary points of ensuring the, a bright future for his organization. One, our role is to prepare, empower, and engage. Be servants of servants. And that is our primary approach, not to be leaders or judges, but to be servants. And to be servants, we will in inspire other devotees to be able to contribute within our Sai centers. First and foremost, we should focus on our own personal sadhana. Only if our self-transformation is at the core of what we do at our Sai center, then everything else will fall in place. Practicing of the five human values. And only then our responsibilities within his organization occurs naturally when our own personal sadhana is put front and center. As we serve within our Sai centers, we should always reflect on, am I serving him or am I serving him? The, div the distinction between the two is on the letter I. One is more body consciousness. The latter is serving with the presence of Swami in our hearts. And lastly, we can do as much as we can, carry out our responsibilities within our Sai centers, but at the end of the day, we have to surrender to Swami. And with that, I leave you with this quote. Total surrender, leaving everything to His will, is the highest form of devotion. Sri Satisai Speaks, Volume 1, 1953. Jai Sairam.